Don't let them forget you. Don't let them go to the hands of another client. Welcome to the Cleaning Up Podcast, Millionaire Secrets of the Home Services Industry, brought to you by me, Ron Holt. CEO and founder of Two Maids and a Mop, America's fastest growing cleaning company. I get a chance to sit down with home service industry pros and other entrepreneurial leaders so they can share their stories, their insight, their experiences. It's so much fun. You're going to learn so much. You're going to be inspired to take your small business into a national brand just like I did. Let's jump right into the interview. Uh, John Braun is here today. Uh, John was in Pensacola, Florida at about the same time I was in Pensacola. He was sort of building his business at a very similar time. He owned a carpet cleaning company called Premium Carpet Care that he has since sold, pursuing the American dream and moved out to Colorado to hit the ski slopes. But while he's doing that, also still serving a lot of consumer services companies, specifically within the carpet cleaning space, but also a lot of maid services across the country as well. And John's here today to not only talk about that story of his ownership down in Pensacola of the carpet cleaning company, but also about some things that you can do as an entrepreneur, as a business owner um, inside the two maids in a mop world uh, from an offline marketing perspective. I know we talk a lot about digital marketing here and how effective that is and how strong the ROI is, but there's a lot of things that you can use that are still black and white printed, you know, whether it's newspaper, direct mail, or newsletters, we'll talk about a lot of those things, but a lot of those things can be very effective and, and um, have a really strong ROI as well. So John, welcome to the Two Maids in a Mop podcast. Thank you, Ron. It is a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, I'm really glad to do this. You and I go way back and we've got a lot of, uh, well, I don't know, down and dirty stories that we could tell about, <laughs> about business. That's for Pardon sure. the pun, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's tell these guys a little bit about our relationship. And I, I've got to jump right out of the gate and tell a funny story that hopefully you do not remember because it was not one of my finer moments, but there was a, a lunch. You, you invited me to lunch. We had met a couple of times prior to that. And even though you were in carpet cleaning and I was in the residential cleaning world, very similar industries, probably the same customer base. And so we were just talking about some things that we could do to help one another. And you were, you were a little bit more entrenched in the market than, than I was. And so to me, you were, you were it, you know, you were who I wanted to be. And so, when we had that lunch that day, I was super excited to just learn from you and just tell me more things about, even if it was just about Pensacola, because even for me, Pensacola was a new market. So I just wanted to learn more about the, the demographics and the socioeconomics there. And so we, we had this lunch scheduled. I think it was at a Slotsky's um, like sandwich shop or whatever. Sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and man, my day was just a tornado. Like it was just craziness. And, um, I brought that craziness into the restaurant during lunch and we had, you know, an hour or so booked there to just kind of talk and learn more about one another. But we, we talked for maybe 10 minutes because 50 of those 60 minutes, I was back and forth from the table to my phone and just for the lack of a better word, all hell was breaking loose across uh, my, my, my business. And so toward the end of that conversation, I was there to what I thought learn from you and get some inspiration from you. And you said, man, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> You've had, you had pity for the craziness and the frenzy uh, that I was going through at that moment. And it was just this sort of eye opening experience for me to make me wonder the rest of the day. In fact, I wondered, am I in the right business? <laughs> like, am I doing the right thing? And from the, you know, from the inside looking out, I'm just working hard. You know, I'm doing my thing, just trying to survive and grow. And from, clearly someone that's been in, in the industry looking from the outside in saw something much different. <laughs> you know? So it was a, it was a tough thing to hear, but I'll always remember it. And whether you remember it or not, it was, it was actually a pretty pivotal moment for me because it made me want to get more serious about things that I wasn't serious about, systems, process, automation, right. you know, things that we all talk about today and that we have today, thankfully. But, you know, without that, without that moment, I don't, I don't, maybe later on I would have evolved into that, but who knows? I, I know that that was for me sort of a turning point at least. So, 
Wow. Well, you know, I, I like I, I I hope that I at least told you something encouraging other than just pity. But then, you know, sometimes for entrepreneurs, we need somebody to have a shoulder to cry on because <laughs> right. uh, our, our wife doesn't want to hear it. Our, our employees don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? Who can we Absolutely. talk to? So that's maybe maybe where I was trying to go. You know, Ron, I understand. Uh, but, you know, I, I feel sorry for you. Sometimes that's good to hear. Sometimes <laughs> it helps you get in the right direction, you know. Well, you know, for, for everyone that's not from or living in Pensacola, let me tell you, John, John's company, Premium Carpet Care, was not just well-known, but well-established um, and just a lot of well-respected in the community. And he had a lot of business. And, you know, we, we traded a lot of leads along the way and served a lot of the same customers along the way. But, but he, John built a really strong business there, like, Again, he went on to sell that, but I want, I want more people to know more about you. You know, a lot of people in the carpet cleaning industry, when you say the word John, Ron, they know exactly who you're talking about. He's, he's a real icon in that particular industry. But for us folks here in the residential cleaning world, we, we may not be as familiar with her. So why don't you kind of go back prior to that Slotsky restaurant uh, episode and tell sure. us what brought you into the industry and, yeah. and just a little bit more about what you did while you owned the business there. Love to. Yeah. I, I basically was in college at University of West Florida in Pensacola, majoring in advertising and reading a bunch of marketing books. And I just caught the entrepreneurial bug. And I thought, you know, I need to start a company. I did some research and I found out the cleaning business was a very low cost to get into and very highly profitable uh, to get a quick profit from. And I thought, you know, I'll do this just to get to some marketing experience. I eventually wanted an ad agency, but I knew that, how old was I at the time? Probably 22. Nobody's going to hire a 22 year old to be their ad agency guy. Now, nowadays they might because of the digital space, but this is sure. back when digital was early in the infancy, you know, before Google AdWords was even going at this point. And so I figured I need to get some experience. So I'll do this for a few years and then sell it or just whatever, you know? So I got into the carpet cleaning industry and I started building my company up to be a, a very popular, popular company. And I started making more money than I thought I would. And I was like, well, geez, I don't want to get rid of this now. I'm, I'm making pretty decent money. I just got this going off the ground. If I start an ad agency, that's another whole series of work and clientele building. But what happened is in the industry, other guys started seeing my website and some of the digital and offline marketing I was doing. And they'd start going, Hey, can you do a website for me? Hey, can you write a sales letter for me? Can you do a email campaign for me? And I started going, sure. And then it just sort of evolved into, and I, I would speak at different industry events and stuff. And then it sort of evolved into something where I started doing consulting and I started a company called Hitman Advertising. And I've been doing that for about 12 years now. That's all I currently do right now. And I help, mostly carpet cleaning restoration companies. I do help some maid services as well. And I do help window cleaning, pressure washers, um, really cleaning companies in general with online and offline marketing. Uh, but, you know, building my carpet cleaning company up, I tested every type of marketing. The only thing that I didn't do to, to much extent was billboard marketing. And I started to a few times, but then i I pulled back for one week reason or another, but I did radio, I did TV with pretty good success. I did a lot of newspaper. Newspaper back in the day was great. And by the way, in, in some smaller cities and even medium-sized cities, newspaper's still good. I still have some of my clients that do newspaper ads that do pretty well. Um, I did AdWords when that first even started and Facebook ads like crazy when that first started. Email marketing, you know, you name it. I've tested all of it. And uh, really, part of it was just that excitement of, uh, like I, I talked with one of my clients the other day about when I first started doing some marketing with them. They were like, you know, John, what's so neat about this is we can create an ad, we can create something, and all of a sudden business and money starts coming in. That's what excites me. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I, like to, I like to go in and create that thing, get it set and get it going and go, wow, that, that thing that I just created is now bringing money in. It's now bringing jobs in. It's now bringing new clients and it's convincing people that have never heard of us to all of a sudden start using our service and paying more money. By the way, we were one of the most, if not usually the most expensive carpet cleaning company in Pensacola. I don't know if, you know, if I, I don't usually used to back in the day always tell you that, Ron, but we were. Sure. <laughs> you know? no, no, so, no. 
I was I was a customer of Couple. Right, so right. I, reckon, I remember that. <laughs> right. So to do that, though, you have to do two things. You have to market better and convince your clients that you're better. And, and it's not just saying we're better. Nobody believes that. It's got to be a lot deeper than that. We can even talk about that a little bit later if we have time. But you have to convince them that they're better and you have to market better. Yeah. And you have to be better. You know, you, you, you have to go out and do a better service and deliver a better service. So do you, you probably don't remember this. Do you, during another lunch that we had um, after the crazy lunch that we had there at Slotsky's, uh, we kind of worked together on some ideas and you were just helping me as a friend on some copy ideas mm-hmm. for a newspaper ad. Um, mm-hmm. And I know, you, I know you just talked about that newspapers in some markets, ironically are still very popular in some cases, but right. back in those days, the newspaper in Pensacola, Florida was it, you know, that it was, was slamming. Like, it, yeah. It, yeah. You, you throw a black and white ad up there and man, you, your phone's just going to start ringing. And so we, we were, we were doing that and it was a sort of business card size ad, but it was very generic and didn't say a whole lot other than look at me. And so you said, Hey, why don't we kind of mix this up? And so we came up with this kind of really funny, I thought it was pretty funny um, headline that said your, your home looks like a tornado went through it. <laughs> let, us, let us fix that or something like that. But the headline right. was a, your, your, a tornado has went through your home. And so that ran for a few weeks until hurricane Ivan came in. And uh, that, th- you know, you, you, you have these um, contracts with the newspaper companies and you can't just call up on a Tuesday and stop the Wednesday edition. Right. You know, it's, it's going out several days in advance. And that so, was the downfall of the newspaper that I didn't like. Yeah. Right. But the, the t- stupid tornado headline ran from about two weeks after Hurricane Ivan landed. <laughs> so in some cases, a tornado did go through some someone's home. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. All right. So um, without reminiscing too much, why don't we talk about the future? So, um, you know, what's so great about marketing, like you said, is you can create something almost like a blank canvas and a beautiful piece of art is created and a real strong return. Some businesses have been made off nothing but marketing, really, really poor systems, really poor service in some cases, but you can build a marketing machine. That doesn't mean it's going to be a long-term success, but you can create some short-term success with just marketing in some cases. Um, So let's talk about some of those offline tools that you have, you have employed inside your own business and what you've advised others uh, to do in their business as well. And I'd like to start with what I think you're really, really good at. And it's that direct mail uh, slash newsletter marketing uh, vehicle that that we have employed here back in the old days and some of our franchisees have. Um, I know you are really, really good at it in terms of just the copy itself and the distribution and, and how to pull that off. So tell us what you advise your 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 clients to do when it comes to direct mail and or newsletter marketing. Sure thing. So first and foremost, I like to talk about past client marketing. And I know, I get it. I I sometimes talk to cleaners about this and they look at me with a glazed over and they don't really want to hear this. But here's the reality. And the funny thing is, the first thing I ever learned in my first advertising class is most companies neglect marketing to their past clients and they're losing so much. It's so much easier to get a past client to come back than it is to get a new client. Not only easier, but usually an easier system once you get them in because it's usually, well, do, what do you want to do? Who? And they'll say the same things last time. Great. And the conversation's over. There's no convincing them to use your service again. But furthermore, you can market to them a lot for a lot less money. And uh, cleaning companies are really, really missing the boat because it's super important to concentrate on that past client. So big thing, and I know in the maid industry, it's a little different than the carpet cleaning industry, but there is a certain point in a maid company that you realize that's a lost customer. And I don't know if that is that point, Ron, is it a month, two months, three months, six months? When, when we define that again real quick. At the point that you realize time's gone by that you haven't heard from them and they're a lost customer in your mind. Yeah. So two to three months, we don't okay. necessarily define it in that manner. Uh, recurring right. revenue is such a big part of our business that that's right. usually what we focus on. But those one-time jobs, whether it's a move out cleaning or right. a, even a deep you know, spring cleaning of some sort, um, those are guys that may only plan to use us once in their lifetime. So those, right. I guess, would be what you call the lost customer. Not, not necessarily those. Okay, here's uh, probably what's going on too after COVID. If you got clients that are canceling and they haven't called you back because 
they 100%. Just, yeah, Absolutely. okay. So that's the lost client, right? That's who I'm talking about. And, or to somebody who has been getting cleaning done for you for a year, six months or whatever regularly. And then now the wife lost her job or maybe she's staying home because I had a baby. And for a short period of time, they plan on not getting cleaning done professionally, but probably in the future, it's on the plate, just not right away. So that's a lost client, right? And when they come back, they might not remember your company name. They might not remember who you are. They might not know your card is or your email or whatever, or they might not yet intend on coming back. So how do you inspire them to come back early? You know, for carpet cleaning, it's about two years. Carpet cleaning is done on average one to two years. At two years, we think they're gone, right? So we send them a letter. Hey, Mrs. Jones, we miss you. It's been X amount of months. It's been X amount of years. It's been whenever. And we, we haven't heard from you in a long time. Do we do something wrong? If we did, please call us and let us know. So you're giving them that plea. And this is usually in a letter. We also do this in a flyer and in a postcard as well. It tends to be that letters work a little bit better. But we again, we do a combination. And then we give them a special offer. Say, if you come back, we do have this special offer. We'd love to hear from you. And even if you're not ready to come back yet, just call us and let us know how you're going, how it's, everything's going. You're trying to keep that relationship Right now, can you do this in email? And should you do this in email? Yes. But I'm sure, Ron, you know what the email open rates are, right? 10 yeah, to super, 20%. Super low. Right? Yeah. Right, right. So you're, you're ignoring 80 to 90% of your clientele if all you ever do is email them. Still email them. It's super cheap. But something in the mail is the only sure way that you can actually contact that client ever again, short of picking up the phone and calling them, which is feasible too and doable from a marketing standpoint. But how many times can you pick up the phone and call them? And then two, how long of a message can you actually give them? That letter can give them a longer message and it's less intrusive. Some people get flat out mad when you call them. <laughs> you know, to, right. to try to sell them or solicit them. Not to say that you shouldn't. There are times where you should call. We even do things like in, in Hitman Advertising that we teach on how to do ringless voicemail drops. I don't know if you know about that, where you would call them and that it doesn't ring and just a voicemail goes and it's as if you were calling them to, you know, wish them a uh, happy Thanksgiving or whatever the case may be. But so that's another thing. So do all those. But the only sure way that that's the least intrusive, you can send me all the letters you want. And as long as my mailbox isn't totally full, I don't care. I'll just throw it in the garbage if I don't want it. But if you call me, you're interrupting my day. And it, depending on my mood, I might not be that happy that you called me, right? So that letter tells a bigger story. You can put more in there. And the great thing about it is a phone call, unless, well, if you have a voicemail, it's something they can store. But a letter is something they can store, and so is a postcard. And so it's a flyer, like a trifolded brochure flyer, but it's something they'll put on their refrigerator. We see it all the time. They'll put it on the refrigerator, they'll store it on their desk. And now it's a constant reminder because it's something tangible, right? Emails aren't tangible. They get deleted. I mean, sometimes they'll get saved, but um, uh, so, so that, so don't, don't forget first, first and foremost, your past clients. So going forward from there, after you've got some of your past clients and what, what I recommend is it's just some type of a, ongoing campaign for maid services it might be after two or three months that you haven't heard from them uh for a carpet cleaning company two months for pressure washing it might be a year i mean i'm sorry carpet cleaning company two years for pressure washing you know you got to figure out where your sweet spot is for that so after you've been doing that on some level you still might want to be doing some level of constantly marketing back and building your brand back to them um for like the carpet cleaning industry and i'm sure it works this way with the maid service the guys that are the the low budget, low rate, you know, fly by nights, they're not putting out a client newsletter. They're not doing something to continuously educate. So what does the client newsletter really do? And by the way, yes, you should do it both physical and email. Uh, but a client newsletter should educate them about various topics, maybe how to better vacuum your carpet, maybe how to, and it might be things that you do for them, right? You, you obviously are going to vacuum their carpet, but when you come in and you educate them about like the different vacuums and what's a better system and better way to vacuum and the better types of vacuum and HEPA filtration and all of this. Now you're somebody different. Your brand is built up in their mind as the professional cleaner. You see, and sure, you can do that in the house too, but when you also do that via a newsletter that tells that story, now you've got a bigger, more professional brand built up in their mind. And you're, the other thing too is anytime you mail them something or email them something, you're continuously in front of them going, oh, two maids and a mop. 
wonderful. I, these guys, I love these guys. Even if they don't read the newsletter, even if they just throw it away, even if they just delete the email, that, that brand quickly got in their mind. And they, if they caught attention and, and that they enjoyed the idea of, well, vacuums, ideas for vacuums. Well, I'm thinking about buying a new vacuum. They'll read that. And now they're, you're, they're tenfold in love with two maids and a mop because you just educated them about the best vacuum to buy make sense it, it makes total sense yeah, uh, yeah there's there's two things that pop into my mind that i'm assuming all of our franchisees that are listening are thinking as well number one most of our franchisees they're great people super intelligent hardworking, what i like to call entrepreneurial hustlers but they're probably not authors and so the folks out there that not only are not authors but hate writing what are they going to do they how what does this newsletter look like? What's this sales letter even look like that you're sending out to your lost customers? Is that something that someone can help you with? Is that something that you can pull off without having to be, you know, Pulitzer Prize winner of some sort? Sure, sure. Yeah, there are programs for this. I do uh, offer programs like that for, for the carpet cleaning industry. Some people, uh, some of my, I do have a few made clients and some of them have tried to twist my arm to get me to do that for newsletters. And I may in the near future, by the way, do that, you know, some type of a system for that for for um, for for made companies, but but yeah, you, you you need to have an employee that maybe can do it. You can also go to Fiverr sometimes or or Upwork.com and get them to write the article and put it over. And just then you also have to design have to designer have a designer do it and somebody to to write it. So it's a little bit of a you know a little bit of a to do, but it's well worth it. But there are programs already out there. Again, I'm I'm thinking about doing a program like that in the near future, um, just to give made services something to where they don't have to come up with the whole uh, thing all by themselves. But somehow you need to get it done. It's well worth it. Do you need to do it every month? No. You know, for maid service, once a quarter, you know, right? Four times a year. You know, the cost, maybe 50 cents per newsletter, I, two, two bucks to market right. to your past client every year, you know? That, that was going to be my next question. What type of cost are we looking at? You know, we, we could be talking for one of our new stores that's maybe less than a year old, there may be 50 or fewer clients that this mm -hmm. reaches, you know, but for right. a more established, more mature store that has, you know, years and years of history behind it, this is going to dig pretty deep into, you know, 200, 300, 400 plus customers. So, sure. you know, how expensive does this look, you know, is there bulk postage rate, you know, opportunities, or is this all just old school, go get a universal stamp and <laughs> stick it on there and send it. Sure, sure. Yeah, if you work with the mail house, by the way, sometimes that's the easiest way to do it. We work with the mail house that so we refer our clients that, that they don't want to touch it. They just want to give it to the mail house and they do it. Cost, you're probably looking at, you know, depending on how you mail it, probably in the 50-ish cents range. If you're mailing more than a thousand, it gets down to 40 cents. I used to send out, and these are only my regular clients for my cleaning company that have done business within the last like two and a half years. I would send out 2,500, 3,000 newsletters every other month, sometimes every month, usually 10 times a year. So we'd send most months and we'd skip on our busiest months. And every single time we would mail these out, our phone would ring off the hook because these people loved us. We did a pretty good service for them, hopefully a really, really good service, you know, and they loved us. And they knew who we were and they expected that newsletter and we didn't let them forget about us. And the, the way that we felt about it is we were going to mail them those 10 times a year. So that over the course of, we take them off the mailing list after two and a half years or after the two and a half years, we would mail them something with that I miss you theme. Hey, we haven't heard you from you in two and a half years, you know, and we're wondering, do we do something wrong? What, you know, that whole theme. And then we take them off the list if they didn't call. Sometimes they would call after they get that newsletter that last letter and go hey don't take us off your mailing list we still love you guys we just haven't felt like we needed cleaning yet okay well that's fine we'll still keep you on but if we didn't hear from them we didn't mail them anymore but we felt like after two and a half years we mailed to them probably 25 times and at that point they remember us and our brand is built in their mind and it's up to them here's the other thing about like past client marketing that that we need to really put a firm grip on and this works for any cleaning company not everyone hires a cleaning company so understand that and you you know that all sure. of your made people know that the the people that actually have hired you they are special they are one of a few in the demographic out there that do hire a cleaning company and now you know who they are they're very likely to use you again. Market back to them. 
Don't let them forget you. Don't let them go to the hands of another client. And the other thing too that can be done with all of this past client marketing is you can often spur them on from a one-time made service person or a once a year for the holidays made service person to a, oh, we'll do this every month now because this is great right? Especially when you get back in front of them and educate them about all the benefits and all the great things that you do and how professional that you are. Um, you know, for the big thing for like the carpet cleaning industry would be convincing people that, look, you shouldn't get this done every year. You have pets. You should get this done every six months. And when you educate them in the right way, it, it not everybody gets convinced and starts cleaning every six months, but some of them do. And now you're quadrupling your profit right? You're quadrupling your sales. You're quadru so the, the key for a maid service would be turn that one-time guy into an every month guy or that once a year person just for the holidays into a, for the holidays and maybe for Easter or for graduation or whatever those, you know, other holidays are maybe for all the holidays, maybe have a special just based on all the holidays. So, so the newsletter's always been an intriguing concept to me. And I know we're talking about lost customers right now. However, is there an opportunity to also to continue to market to your current customers in our world? You know, a, a million dollar two maids and a mop has 300 or so recurring clients. That's right. coming. You know, we're cleaning that house every other week or whatever it is. Should the newsletter to go to your recurring clients as well? Yes. Yes. There's, there's a, in, in advertising and in marketing, you still need to build your brand with your current clients. Apple does it. Google does it. If you really think about all the big, big marketing companies out there, uh, big companies out there, they do it. Coke continuously markets back to you. Um, and so and it's because they, they, one, they don't want you to forget them, but two, they want to give you different various messages to back up what your brand is all about. Your brand, if just like if you ever study like script writing for like film or, or, or stories, you don't want a flat character. If you, do, if you never tell them all the different things that your brand's about and that you do, your brand's flat to them. So how do you build your brand up? You tell them and educate them about choosing the best vacuum, about you educate them about beware of these harsh chemicals inside of your home. By the way, we never use those. You see how you're making yourself multi-dimensional when you when you give them those messages. Well, and on top of this, I can't. When we first started our businesses, direct mail was a pain in the you know what. I mean, right. leave way too much of it, and almost all of it was trash because of that. But today it's not as prevalent as it used to be and right so today. When you receive something in the mail, even if it is junk mail, I know my wife and I, we tend to check it out. It still may find right. its way into the garbage, uh, sure. but we give it more time than we did years ago. Is that, is that fair to say? Absolutely. So the costs have gone up a little bit, but I, you know, my, I used to have this, this is one of the philosophies I ever tell my, my coaching clients is find out what your competition's doing and run the other way as fast as you can. I love <laughs> right? it. So you don't find out what your competition is doing to copy them. Oh, they're not doing direct mail. They're only doing Google ads, which by the way, I love Google ads, but so I'm not talking Google ads at all, but uh, th that's not a reason to not do direct mail. Sure. Right. Well, so when we say direct mail, we're talking specifically about not only lost customers, but this newsletter format, right? Right. Well, so, I mean, not, not only that's, that's again, one way, but there's other ways to do neighborhood marketing too, which I want to touch on, which is a whole separate ordeal, but, but let's finish this topic. Yeah. So I want to give you a, a hot button question that I see a lot within the, the marketing world. So when it comes to direct mail for those folks within the industry, this is going to sound like, you know, back of the hand stuff, but for folks outside of the industry, they may not know what we're talking about, but there's a real debate going on. It seems like it's been going on forever on long copy versus short copy, meaning right. quick one page sales letters versus multiple page sales letters that seem to never end right. um, with, you know, offer after offer. Um, which side of the fence do you live on and, and why? Well, I, I live on the side of the fence that one, I have tested myself personally and I've learned from the big marketing gurus about this as well. So it's not just my own philosophy that I came up with for fun. So it's important that I, that I note that, but long copy all day long outsells short copy and think about it this way. If you were to go to your 
prospect's house who was kind of on the fence about hiring a maid service. Would you go there and just give them one really short witty phrase and show them a picture and go, hire us? Or would you, would you potentially give them a, maybe a good, a good picture? You might give them a good PowerPoint presentation to picture, but you're going to tell them repeatedly about all of the benefits and all the different benefits that your company does over the competition. And it's not going to be done and it's not going to be sold in one or two or three or four or five sentences. Am I right? It, it seems plausible to me. Yeah. Yeah. So long copy all day long. And again, I have tested postcards with the pretty picture newsletters with just a pretty picture and a couple of really witty uh, sentences. And then I've also tested postcards with, you know, super tons of text that you could hardly fit any more text into the postcard. And every single time and newspaper ads as well, right? Every single time the ad with all of the text sold. Now, now again, the, the, the argument to that is always, well, they're not going to read all that. Well, that's true. They're not. And I have no expectations that they are going to read all that. Now, some people will. I want it there for the people who will, but I also want to make sure that one, the biggest part of it is the headline is super beneficial. As soon as they read that headline, they at least have something positive and beneficial about what your company does, even if they don't read the rest of the ad. So that's the big thing. That headline is that one witty, that one, and that, not, not, that doesn't always necessarily have to be witty, but that one statement that sits in their mind about the big benefit, like our big one that we, one of the big ones we used to do for my clinic company was you'll get the cleanest carpet in Pensacola guaranteed. And then the rest of the ad talked all about how we were going to give them the cleanest carpet in Pensacola. And it talked about all of our other specific guarantees. And it went into details about what that big benefit was about. Um, you know, another one that we did for like tile cleaning that made me well over a million dollars was sparkling clean tile and grout. Wow, how can I get that? And they would read about how they would get, and it had a little picture, you know, of like tile and grout. I think one of the times was a picture of like my wife scrubbing tile and grout. You know, it was a black and white picture <laughs> scrubbing tile. And then, but that was a you know very 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 profitable ad for me. And again, it was only like a dollar bill size ad with that headline very small picture and then specifics about how we were going to give them that benefit. So that has to be written right. There's a lot of ads that go out there that maybe somebody put together with a lot, just thinking, that, Oh, a long copy sells. So let me put a bunch of just blah text into this and it's going to sell. That's not the case. It has to be the right formula. It has to be the right stuff really for it to work. All right. So let's talk about another offline marketing vehicle that I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about to learn more about from you it's actually how we became connected and we could probably talk days on days about this process. But we're going to talk just for a few minutes, unfortunately, but the, the idea of referral marketing, uh, referral yeah. marketing, um, you again, probably don't remember this, but you, you had me hooked uh, early on as a, as a, again, similar trade cleaning services versus carpet cleaning. And you reached out and just by direct mail, you kind of caught my attention and I said, Hey, why not? You know, every now and then someone's going to call our residential cleaning company and, and need a carpet cleaner, or, or at least maybe need a recommendation for a carpet cleaning. And why not profit from that? Why not share some revenue in that? And so you offered that opportunity and it created a relationship that goes on to this day. So uh, tell, tell our guys, tell our franchisees what referral marketing is and how it can work inside the industry. Sure, sure. Every cleaning company needs to have a referral program because like I mentioned, you only have a certain demographic that really even hires the cleaning company. And, and sometimes it's even not even just people that have more money. It's people that have the mindset that they want a cleaning company because guess what? I've, I've talked to some people in several million dollar homes and never hire, hire a professional cleaning company, right? right? So you have to find who those people are. And chances are their friends are like them, right? So once you find who that is, you want to have some type of a program. And we don't have to get into specifics what it should be, but some type of an incentive, right? And sometimes it's a, it's a payout. Sometimes if it's, it's a free cleaning for X amount of whatever, let's not get bogged down with that, but something that they're going to enjoy. Sometimes it's a restaurant gift certificate, whatever, but something in place. Now, here's the other way that newsletters work great or something that you send periodically is you outline that referral program in most, if not all of your newsletters and your postcards and put a little blurb in your emails too about that. And also, uh, please forward this email to a friend who needs cleaning. Please give this postcard to a friend who needs, needs cleaning. Now you have a pass around. But when like the re relationship that we're talking about, that's one way past clients, but also 
working with other businesses. I mean, I don't know if you even remember this, Ron, but the how we met is I think I just stopped by, if I remember right, I stopped by at Two Maids and a Mop. I probably had a gift bag with some little cookies or you something did. in it, I one of my that. brochures, <laughs> probably all, one of my client newsletters. It's all right? coming and, back to me now. That's yeah, true. yeah. <laughs> and I walked in and I and, and, and guess what? It wasn't just a gift bag with nothing in it. I, I'm sure I had a client newsletter. I'm sure I had one of my brochures. I'm sure I might have had a gift card. I don't know if I had this back then, but a business card, maybe a coffee mug I don't know and some cookies and I said hey how's it going I'm John with premium carpet care and you're like I'm busy I'm dealing with maids that are driving me insane right now but I'm like hey I have a gift for you and you're like oh oh wow <laughs> right and I, I don't remember how 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 you hey, know if how, you how bought in cookies then it works right so. <laughs> right and so you you because of that little gift that cost me probably two bucks you were willing to give me you know a minute of your time, maybe two minutes. I don't remember how long we talked that one day, but the, the deal was after I met you, I'm pretty sure, and I don't even remember the specifics. I just know how I did my system back then. I'm pretty sure I put you instantly on my client newsletter list. So just like all my other clients, you got my newsletter in the mail. If we had an email newsletter at the time, which we probably did, I probably sent you an email newsletter as well. And so, but then too, I also put you on an Excel spreadsheet and then we've never even talked about this, right? <laughs> but, sure. uh, but I'm sure you can imagine. I'm sure I put you on an Excel spreadsheet and on a route to go visit you again sometime in the future and or call you. And I did. I followed up. I actually did that, right? And, and here's the thing, Ron, I didn't just do it at Two Maids and a Mop. Um, I did it at uh, Plumbers. I did it at, uh, you know, I did it at a couple of other maid services too. It, I think it turned out that I had a better relationship with you than any of the other maid services. But, but you know, and sometimes carpet stores can get kind of like, oh, geez, I don't want you working with me if you're working with another carpet store made services i guess can get that way too but i always tended to have one of that particular type of business that i worked with more than another one and i usually work with you more than the other made services but as a side note but anyway i did that for plumbers where i'd go into um Roto, Roto Rooter, you know, and I go in and I give them the same kind of thing. Next thing you know, I'm getting water damage restoration jobs that are like two and three and five thousand dollars, right? Because somebody's pipes broke, you know, simply because I went and dropped off a gift bag, smiled and said, hey, and put them on my email newsletter list, right? So any type of business that would have somebody who would, and we did this for a carpet. Uh, carpet stores, flooring stores, at furniture stores, interior designers, and it, I, you know, I, on, for so, at some level, each one of those type of people in the area, I had somebody that I'd work with that would give me a decent amount of business. And I wouldn't just take the business. I'd usually give them something in return. I would usually refer them. I think one time for you, Ron, if I remember right, I think I put, cause I, I remember seeing the newsletter a little while ago. I, I did a little ad for two maids and a mop for free in my client newsletter. You I don't did. know if you even remember that, but yeah. And you were just getting started. I'm like, oh, Ron's struggling. It might've been after that Schlotsky thing, right? <laughs> I felt sorry was. for him. Ron's struggling. Let me put out a free ad for him in my newsletter. <laughs> but I would do that kind of stuff that this, you know, you know, you helped me or even maybe before you were, you were helping me much and referring me much. I would sometimes do that and preemptively help out you know, Rotorooter or whoever, or if Rotorooter called and they had a, I think one time they called, they had an issue where uh, they caught, they caused the flood. I went and took care of this thousand dollar flood for them for free. Why? Well, because they'd already referred me, to, I don't remember, tens of thousands of dollars or whatever in business. I was okay with that. You know, so it's, it's, that's the process, but have some type of a program, go out and visit these people. Now, now here's the thing. There, there were cases where I'd walk into a carpet retailer. No, no, we don't refer a carpet cleaning company. And he's, well, really? Well, you know, and the thing is from there, yeah, I, and maybe I even overstepped my boundaries, but if I remember right, this, it was American carpet, by the way, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that did this, that we don't refer, but I'm like, well, geez, I don't, I don't get it. You guys sell this product. Um, you've got somebody who's having an issue with it. What are you going to tell your customers? And the, after a couple of visits and it took a few, I was able to actually, I think what it was is one of my past clients actually was friends with the manager. And so I came in and I was like, Hey, is Denny here? And yeah, Denny's here. And I, Hey, I'm friends with, I can't even remember the, my client's name, but I'm friends with Molly, I think was her name. And Oh yeah, yeah. She told me about you. And now I'm getting referrals from American carpet. There you go. That works. <laughs> yeah. But, but none of this happened overnight. 
None of this happened. Uh, it's very slow and, and it all happens. You got to be professional about how you do it. I would go out and usually sometimes I'd go out in a suit. I don't know if I ever did it at your place. Sometimes a suit, sometimes just with a logo uniform shirt, long sleeve, nice shirt, but I'd go out and I always have literature. That was a big thing. Don't just go out empty handed with a business card. You know, you got to have, I'd, I'd give out gift cards. I'd give out brochures, my past client newsletter. And that past client newsletter said, Hey, this company cares more than XYZ company because they're educating me about this stuff. But it all works together. I love it. I love the hustle too. That's, that's, yeah. that's, what, that's what entrepreneurship's all about, you know? Right. So, all right. So you've teased us a little bit about this neighborhood marketing uh, <laughs> process. So let's, let's, let's hear more about it. I'm, I'm interested and intrigued myself to learn about it. Sure. Well, you know, this really boils down to like what realtors are really the ones who started the neighborhood farming. That's really kind of in a nutshell what this is. And so you pick out your ideal neighborhoods that you really want to work with. And here's what I would usually suggest, you know, and you might already hopefully have some ideas just based on you driving around. That's really, I, you'd go drive around, you figure out, I used to go and point out the neighborhoods before I was ever, before my business was ever anything, probably when I was just working part-time. And I would go, I would put them on my, on my, goal list. I go, that neighborhood is going to be mine. That nice neighborhood that, and at first when I put them on that list of my goal list, it was like a pie in the sky idea. Cause these were like, you know, multi, well, that's called maybe not multi, but million dollar houses right on the water, right by the water and very nice neighborhoods. And at the time it was like, that was over my head, but it was still a goal. And I was going to market to that neighborhood. And I picked several neighborhoods and then I gave them, uh, usually what you want to do even today is give them a media mix. So what that means is don't hit them with just one media, hit them in several different layers. So here's what that would look like. I would pick out that neighborhood and I would send them a, maybe an EDDM postcard. And EDDM is one way to do it. Every door direct mail, which is one way to do neighborhood postcards. Um, you can also do it. We also work closely with the mailing house that does it to where you can sometimes do it a little bit better than EDDM where you're skipping apartment complexes and skipping the, sometimes you'll have a mail route where there's really nice homes next to not as nice homes, but um, sometimes a mail house can help you a little bit better. But in a nutshell, we're sending a postcard to a certain designated square mile or two miles or whatever. And and we're basically saying, hey, we're the neighborhood cleaning company, and here's all the great things that we do that other cleaning companies don't do, and here's a special offer, and here's our guarantees. You know, and here's, we want to clean for you because we are the neighborhood cleaning company. And then we would send them this big postcard. You know, usually it's at least a six and a half by nine inch postcard, sometimes an eight and a half by 11 inch postcard, depending on how we're mailing it. And then we would send them another postcard a week later saying, hey, we haven't heard from you yet, with almost the same message, almost the same theme. And then even another postcard, a week after that. So a postcard one week after another, usually send it on a Monday because we don't want them to get it on a Friday or the weekend. We want them to get it Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And then we would uh, give them that repeat message and then we would not market to them for a few months at all, except for some of the other advertising that we're doing now. Along with that, we might also be doing some digital marketing on Facebook ads just for that exact two mile area or whatever that would say the same message, maybe put the same picture. Some of the times in that ad, we would actually put a picture of the front of the neighborhood where the neighborhood cleaning company, Scenic Kills. And it would have the sign from Scenic Kills or the street intro to Scenic Kills. Cause when they see that, they're going to stop in their tracks and go, wow, who are these guys? They're here in our neighborhood. Yeah. We're the neighborhood cleaning company. Of course. So you're going to do that. You're going to um, maybe do some Google ads, maybe display ads saying the same exact thing to back up that repetition. You're also maybe going to get, get some yard signs that say, Hey, we're the neighborhood cleaning company, the picture of the front of your van, and put that, if you can get the permission from your client, put that in their yard for a week or two or whatever. And so you see how this whole mix, and really the, you got to understand that the foundation of it and the most beneficial part of it is the postcard system. Now, we also did this all as well with sales letters, though we didn't just do it with postcards. We also did it with sales letters before EDDM was popular. We would do it with letters where we would basically say the same thing. Hey, we're the neighborhood cleaning company. We you know, have a mailing list. We'd mail them and we'd send them a series. Second thing might be a follow-up letter. Third thing would be a postcard, um, which worked really, really well too. And, but we would only do this to targeted neighborhoods. We wouldn't, again, blanket the whole city. We would pick specific niched farmed neighborhoods that we really um, maybe already had a little bit of a foothold or at least somehow knew that this was definitely potentially a good neighborhood, the type of people that hired a cleaning company. And it needs to be a neighborhood that's a little bit better than average. And really, I don't know what your demographics are in your own cleaning company, but normally I didn't like to go at just average and mediocre, just be a little bit better than 
maybe average income to, to a lot better, sometimes even premium neighborhoods, depending though, depending on your area, you might have houses that are so expensive to where you're only dealing with like their um, custodian person anyway. And in that case, is it marketing that way can still work too. But but you just pick a better than average neighborhood and just keep marketing to them with that whole mix. Uh, and again, again, really the mail program is the only surefire way that you can definitely get in there. It's a leave behind piece. So to me, that's the foundation, but don't forget to even back it up with some of the digital as well. So I know I ran by that quick, but you know, does that make sense? Man, it, it makes total sense because I, I mean, we all, I think we all can understand that the, the more, I don't know how many, I forgot what the marketing message is, how many times, what kind of frequency you need to see a, a marketing message before it really resonates. In, in, in usually at least form. eight, usually wow. at least eight, but again, not always. Sometimes you can get a response on one, but usually at least eight, but that's the whole principle. You're hitting them in, on Google display ads. So that, you know, they, they got your postcard. Now they're on weather.com and they're your display ad is there. Hey, we're the neighborhood cleaning company. These are the same guys who just sent us that postcard or that letter, right. right? I love it. I love it. Well, John, man, you, you are a wealth of knowledge and information when it comes to marketing and advertising. We've known each other for a very long time. Who in the world would have thunk that we would, um, you know, still be kicking and, and doing our thing in, in both of our industries. But I'm proud to call you a friend. I'm proud to call you a, a, even a professional partner. We've worked a lot together over the years. Right. And, um, you, you know, you do a lot of good work and you've built a lot of carpet cleaning companies across the country uh, just with the things that you talked about today. And so I'm, I'm hoping our franchisees learned a lot today. And I'm also hoping that they'll work with you. I think that they can, they can get a lot of value out of, the, of that relationship that we started a long time ago. So please, you know, share with, you know, all our franchisees, the contact information and how they can connect with you down the road. Absolutely. They can give me a call at 850-474-1110, or they can email me at john, J-O-H-N, at hitmanadvertising.com. And too, if they want more information, I've got a blog with just tons of stuff at www.hitmanadvertising.com slash blog, or just go to the main page, hitmanadvertising.com, and uh, sign up for my email newsletter. Got a lot of good stuff in that newsletter as well to help all kinds of cleaning companies. All right, guys. John Braun, uh, thank you so much for being here today on the Two Maids in the Mop podcast. And I'm sure we'll talk again down the road. Maybe it's lots. Of this. Who knows? Yes, sir. Thanks, Ron. I sure appreciate it. This is a lot of fun going down memory lane. That's right. All right. Hey, guys. Beth Lovett in business development. If you enjoyed this episode, then please share with your friends. And don't forget to tune in to the next episode of Cleaning Up. Have you ever wondered if you wanted to be in business for yourself? If so, then don't hesitate to give me a call at 205-789-8027 or email me at bethl at ineedamaid.com. And if you just want to window shop, then you can see us online at twomaidsfranchise.com.